Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining me for tonight for the Galactic Show, where we're going to be talking about Vedic gods, goddesses, and flying Vamanas. This has been such a fun show to research, and it is something very close to my heart after having some really intense, amazing spiritual experiences. Um, and what's interesting is I didn't really go seeking this topic. The topic kind of came seeking me in my younger years. So you can see here hours upon hours of research gone into uh, this topic. And I'm going to share as much as I can within the hour. So please hold tight as we get through everything. And I can see we've got beautiful soul family here. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining me. I appreciate seeing your beautiful I was going to say faces, <laughs> you beautiful names up on the screen every single week. Um, I do operate comments and things myself as well. So it is a little bit hard to, to get to everyone. So just know that um, I do go back and read over things as well. So I appreciate you all. Uh, so a few things just to remind you guys first. So we have Maison Jupiter uh, YouTube channel and also the Rumble channel. And you can see there's a lot of things that we have on here. So can't wait to hear all about Julie and Elena's trip and how amazing it was. Uh, and to catch up on a few of the shows over the weekend that I haven't had a chance to, to watch just yet. And unfortunately, if you didn't sign up for the 20% discount, um, we do still have the 10% discount. So please use the word uh, Jupiter in all caps to receive 10% off bookings. So Sophie and I both have that same code word and as does Elena for the candles. So 10% off uh, readings with me, whether it's a starseed reading or a mission oracle reading. And you can see here, there's a lot of information written on what you get in a starseed reading. So just like the shows, I pack as much in to my readings as I can. So you can see examples of aura drawings, and we go over galactic heritage, um, activations and things sometimes will come up. It really depends on where you want to go with it too. And some people do use this also to look into their experiences. So yeah, really, really excited. I've got a few notes and things as well. So when we look into the Vedic side of things, it really is such an interesting, um, not just culture, but an interesting um, subject. So I'm going to do my best to, to hopefully keep things in um, true alignment with what's written in a lot of the old text and things too. But I am more also speaking from um, my personal experience. So let me just pop this up. This is, even though this is a Buddhist picture, it is a depiction of a place called Mount Maru. And it's also a depiction of kind of, I guess, like how things are structured in our universe and in our world. So we can see here that we've got Buddha in the center. So we have a few different Vedic versions that I want to show you tonight too. The reason I have this picture too is more than, oh gosh, it must be like 20 years ago now. And I had some beautiful elders take me under their wing. And they were saying that if we can understand this picture, we can understand how our universe is structured and how everything has an order, how everything kind of works and operates in terms of realms and things. Ah, oh, thank you, Rainbow Sun. Um, so yeah, when we look into like the Vedic culture, um, we have spirituality, information around the esoteric side of things, astrology, the Vedic astrology, which is more set by the stars rather than the planets. So there's 27 different signs, which are called nakshatras. So really interesting to find out your main ascendant and your moon sign. Your ascendant is kind of like your life path or the script to your life and how, um, yeah, how things kind of unfold for you. Your moon sign is more connected to do with your soul mission and purpose. So mine literally is house to moon, which means that I'm a tarot reader or a palm reader. So that's pretty spot on. Uh, we also have um, not only to the Vedic side, and uh, the Indian side bring us the Ayurvedic medicine. They also brought us mandalas, um, technology and medicine and food. So a lot of information that we're going to get to tonight. So let me just click over and bring up our first slide. So we have here, this is a, a picture of Krishna creating the galaxy or creating the universe. So there's a story that said that he lays on his back and he birthed all of these worlds. So there's a lot more artwork and depictions creating lotus worlds. So earth was said to be a lotus world created for the gods and goddesses to come down to experience duality. And I would say, you know, from like a raising of hands, a lot of us down here, we 
haven't experienced that duality where we witness good and evil, dark and light. So as far as like what comes up in a lot of my readings and what I've sort of been able to gather since a child, having like cosmic experiences and beings and things appear to me, we are more kind of like working back to that evolution of higher self and that God goddess realization aspect. So this is just a beautiful picture that really depicts it. And we can see here, we've got the multiverse, the parallel universe, and we can also see this kind of like grid-like structure that is depicted in this. So I really loved this depiction. We see this grid-like structure in Hunger Games. We also see it in, um, I think it was the King Kong movie. Uh, it's in quite a few movies. Uh, Truman Show, we can also see that that dome um, or the, the door open to the other reality. So yeah, with the Lotus Worlds, we do see kind of like a firmament, a firmament and they talk about another realm. Uh, when we look into it, there's universes upon universes upon universes. Just as like when we talk about gods, there's said to be over 33 million gods. So you can imagine me trying to condense a lot of information into an hour. We're just going to get around and get uh, sort of like the surface sides of things. I do want to look into some cards tonight on this subject as well. So we can also see here, this is more kind of like the Vedic um, and Hindu cosmology reference and chart. So I'm just going to make sure. Um, oh, so can I let us know the names of the framed art that you showed at some point? So with this one, I can't remember the name of it. I did actually buy this in Bali, that framed picture. Uh, but yeah, with these ones, you'll get a lot of these come up on Google Images if you type in like Vedic cosmology uh, and things like that. And it's so lovely to see you guys from all over. I really appreciate you all checking in from Nebraska and from the States and yeah, from Norway, all, all, all over and Australia. So we can see here, and I'm just looking a little bit more closely, right in the center, we have Mount Maru. So that is why I wanted to reference this pic, because then I can have a window open at the same time whilst talking to you guys about this center of our realm. So with Mount Maru, it is also said there's rumors that if you were to go visit this place, so it is in India, in the Himalayas, um, and we are said to be living on the south side of the realm here in Earth. Um, in different scriptures, it talks about one side being gold, one side being lapis. In another one, I saw something written about ruby. So it's, it's a very, very special place. Now, it is said to have such a strong magnetic power that if you set foot onto this mountain, that some people have been said to have disappeared, whether they're evaporating, whether they're going up into another realm or whether they're going into a lower realm, who knows? But you can see here, they've got like the various different um, levels. I won't read through all of them, but they are called locus. And we see like there's the lower and that there's the upper. So um, another thing that I I came across too that was interesting was that there's said to be um, two suns and two moons. Uh, there may be more in different uh, other things that I haven't had a chance to look into, but that was the information that I came across. That is the information that um, as, as far as being clairvoyant, that's what's also been shown to me too from spirit. Um, and then recently I did have a vision around the black sun. Oh, and I can see Michigan in the house too. Um, oh, thank you, Tracy. Really, really sweet. So let's have a look into another picture. So this is also another one that was really beautiful depiction in some of the older artwork. So we can see here, this is the total with the elephants on the back and we see Mount Maru. So you really see the significance and the importance of Mount Maru being kind of like this magnetic center. And there's some really amazing I'm not sure if it's still up because it was a, a while ago, but the YouTube channel, The Woken Undead, for anyone that wants to see some of the, um, uh, I guess you would call it like uh, planetary alignments and movements and things like that, The Woken Undead channel, he had some amazing videos that I saw years and years ago, uh, sort of depicting on how this all kind of operates on a cosmology level as well. 
I keep going to say cosmetology because I do have a background in beauty as well. Um, but yeah, we see here too that Amobius strip or that kind of snake biting the tail uh, that we see represented as a figure eight. We see it in the two of disc in the um, in the Thoth tarot deck too. But we do see how important this Mount Maru is in regards to the center. So I would love to hear from anyone in the comments if you have been to Mount Maru, not to be confused by the one over in Africa. Um, yeah, I'm just reading comments at the same time. Let's look at the next picture. So what was really interesting was uh, last weekend I was kind of to go see King Kong and it will make sense in a little minute why I'm talking about this too. What we see down the bottom part of this, we see all of these beautiful higher upper realms and we will get into a little bit more about the goddess and goddess, uh, god and goddess structure of this too. But what we see down the bottom, if you look into the bottom portion of the picture, let me just bring um, another comment up. Okay, so if we look into the pyramids, which if we pop both these pyramids sitting base to base together, it would be an octahedron. So we know that if we're looking into particle physics and things like this, more in quantum physics, that it's said that the God particle, or um, if we're breaking us down into a spark of light, would said to be existing between this octahedron type state. Now, what's interesting in this picture, if we're to look at it as the two pyramids sort of sitting base to base, What's in the center is Mount Maru. Now, in the movie King Kong, they're depicting this as two pyramids sitting tip to tip. And I don't want to be like a spoiler or anything like that, but there is information around that and how important it is with sort of keeping those um, realms separate. So maybe keeping the upper and the lower realm separate and things. So they are kind of like trickling information through, um, which is really, really fascinating. You know, if you've got a sharp eye, um, you can catch things. So this was also a really interesting YouTube from SF Dharma Collective. So this was the Inconceivable Realm, a visual introduction introduction to the Maharajana Buddhist cosmology. So it was um, a really good informative one talking about sort of the structure and things about, around Mount Maru. So you can see here the two pyramids tip to tip like it was depicted in the King Kong uh, movie as well. And it also sort of goes into like the side of the mountain, the realms and things that exist. Um, now, if we do look at like the Perry Reese maps and we look at, you know, other older maps that uh, we brought up last week in the show, uh, we also see how there's like outer layers or outer realms too. Really interesting that they talk about Mount Maru being of significance. So this could be an important mountain to meditate and connect with, maybe receive some downloads, because it is also said that with places like this and places like Shambhala, that this is perhaps where we can access certain records certain kind of ethereal wisdom, um, yeah, information coming in from higher realms and things like that. So really, really interesting. And let me just see. So we also see here the um, pyramidal tip-to-tip uh, -tip mountains, like from the upper and the lower worlds. So this is supposed to be Middle Earth. Um, what's interesting in probably like around towards like the, the middle or the end of the movie too, they also have kind of like the center important kind of spiritual temple part of the realm. Now that was the one that I found interesting and looking into who kind of keeps realms separated and things was very interesting as well. Um, so yeah, I don't want to create too much of a spoiler alert. We also see in a movie coming out later in uh, May, which will be a, uh, an Indian movie called Kalki 2898 AD. So there is also information to do with, um, with the end of the Kal Yuga that we're currently in. There's supposed to be the return of Kalki. So when we look into different gods and goddesses, they will take on different forms or different kind of spiritual avatars. So he is said to return to, um, <clears throat> There was more information in this book if you want to read about it a little bit more in depth. Um, I randomly came across this, and that's the way that I work too, is spirit will guide me like Alice in Wonderland down the rabbit hole. Thank you from joy for joining from Australia too. Um, and yes, definitely watch King Kong again. Um, so this is the new one that we're talking about. There's a lot of like Easter eggs in it. 
um, a lot of like hidden gems. So fascinating to see stuff like this. But yeah, with Kalki returning as well, and hopefully I'm pronouncing his name right, it's interesting that they're talking about this uh, as a topic in movies. Um, I'm just checking that I'm going through all of the notes. Oh, when I looked up um, Mount Maru and Gematria as well, the co it, a little translation of Mount Maru, M-T, and then M-E-R-U. One of the equal uh, words that came out was the code to find God. So if we're looking at perhaps meditating, connecting in with this realm or this place, you know, this could be really, really important um, for our own personal disclosure. And yeah, pumpkin spice, totally constant soft disclosure is what we're seeing in the movies at the moment. So really interesting. Uh, I just saw on Netflix today, there's a movie called Parasite and it's about like, um, I think it's in Parasite Grey or something. I haven't had a chance to look it up too much. Um, the other words that were associated with Mount Maru and Gematria were the hidden code facts and celestial chart. So if we look into Vedic astrology and we look into that being like a template or a script for the play that we're in down here, because I really do look at it more kind of like that we're in a simulated reality. Um, and if we look at it to the Krishna creation story, kind of falling into this world of duality, and apparently it's very, very special to be chosen, to be accepted, to come in, to play in this game down here too. So you will see certain people that come in with like a higher uh, logos or spiritual avatar vibration. And you will also see people come in from like lower world vibrations as well. So we do have both dualities existing here. So it's going to bring up to my next little slide. Um, and we will be having a look into uh, the cards as well. I just want to check. All right, let's come back here and I will bring out my big screen so you guys can see uh, the cards. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. I've put days into this, if not years. And I will be talking about some important spiritual um, yeah, things that have happened. So not just like about mandalas and things that I've had visually appear since I was a child, but also different gods and goddesses that have appeared to me as well. And this was throughout my own seeking. They literally appeared to me and I'm like, okay, I need to find out who this is. I need to find out what this is. So we'll be getting into more of that tonight. Uh, let's have a look into what spirit wants to show us and why my attention has been so strongly drawn to Mount Maru. And why I've had little Easter eggs along the way, you know, like with the painting and, you know, different things like that, that, uh, that show up or people give me little Easter eggs, point me in a direction. So we have five cards here on my desk. So I've got them just here. And oh, thanks, Shauna. I have to go back and have a look. So let's fill into these five cards. You know, you know that I like to read with psychometry and feel into it. So what I'm actually seeing like with this, I am seeing sort of like that pyramid to pyramid type energy that we were talking about. I'm seeing beautiful, beautiful pinks. It would be like the richness of like Lotus energy. And I'm trying my best to translate the movie and the vision that I see into tangible words. So it's a very, very ethereal realm, a little bit different to Shambhala still. Everything feels floating. And I do feel that it's a doorway is what they're showing me. So I'm seeing God, goddess, uh, energy enter in and out. I am seeing that this is somewhere that if we are on the right spiritual vibration and alignment, we can use this energy to enhance our communication. It is also operating on magnetics. So knowing that our, um, our beautiful hearts are also electromagnetic. Hi, Vicky. Um, and knowing that um, we have this beautiful plasma field energy in the pericardium sac of water around the heart too. This is something that we can activate and connect into this grid system or into this electromagnetic beacon. So it would be like connecting to a mothership in a way. But yeah, I wish I could paint the pinks and the greens and the angelic type energy and presence. And that wouldn't even do it just Justice calling this. Um, what they're showing to me is that it's almost like this true 
kind of like nature and bliss type energy when we connect into this it really does show us that like this 3d realm and reality feels so false and feels like an illusion and if you have had some of these gods and goddesses appear to you you know exactly what i mean in terms of like the frequency of love and bliss that just vibrate in and you don't want to leave so i have a bit of that feeling tuning in of not wanting to leave this space as well uh, <laughs> I'm gonna, definitely going to have to tune in and have a look back on this video. Um, I often get carried away through the weeks because I get straight into my readings with clients and things. I'm going to have to, um, yeah, have a look and see what comes out. So I'll just see what else they're showing me. So yeah, what they're showing me, they're giving me the word avatars. And what they're talking about is us choosing to come in <clears throat> into kind of like certain spiritual alignment and avatar type energy to walk in the earth realm. So they are talking about that we choose our avatars or we choose our beings as we come through this gateway or this portal into the world. And I literally keep seeing kind of like a veil open for a second and then we pop through. What they are sort of showing me as well is that there's guardians around this portal. So I do feel that they are keeping certain things out. I am getting kind of like a flagged energy that they're showing me to do with like the startup of CERN as well. And a little bit of a sick feeling, but I also feel that they're going to try and keep as much out of our world as possible. So I do feel that we have people that are holding beacons or lights or even sort of trying to counter um, interrupt certain things that might also be going on. So they're just showing there is an awareness of different portals and places like that. What's interesting too, if we look into places like that, like CERN, for example, uh, they are built on old temple sites and things as well. So I'm going to flip these cards over. We're going to have a look into this. Okay. So what we see, this is really interesting. When we look into the energy of Mount Maru, we have the hermit we have the light bringer and look at this it's kind of that sun energy that particle in the octahedron that we were talking about so we see here this big kind of spiritual being that's holding this light so we also if we look back to the krishna creation story and floating amongst the universe and things too um Oh, and I see Tim saying about the New Jersey quake. No, I haven't, but I saw there was a second um, bridge collapse. And I also, the other night, two nights ago, my partner and I felt an earthquake here, but we couldn't feel, we couldn't see anything online to an earthquake in Melbourne. So that was really, really strange. Um, so yeah, with the hermit as well, being this bringer of light, um, he's kind of, he's a Virgo energy. So he's kind of like reluctant to do it, but he does do it when humanity kind of needs it the most. It is there. So the next one that we also see is the princess of disc. And what's interesting, again, with the octahedron. So spirit really is trying to point us in, um, you know, a direction to look into this Mount Maru energy, look into where it is that border between the upper and the lower realms. There is a lot of really interesting um, frequency that we have coming up with this. We also see the yin yang for balance as well. So, with this card for me, she is Aries with the princess of disc. I've got a new computer, guys. So, hopefully, like the it looks like it's holding up a lot easier than normal. Um, but yeah, with this, what we see here with the princess of disc, I always talk about her being the stubborn teenager. And I talk about her wanting to come in in order to manifest uh, her reality. So she really doesn't take on board what other people say. Uh, what we also see, yeah, it's got Hagrid's fluffy, uh, fluffy dog as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, with this beautiful princess of disc too, we know that she's more kind of like, she's not taking on other people's projections and things. She's kind of creating her version of heaven on earth too. So this is also looking into, um, you know, what it is that we can do to re-remember the God goddess aspect that uh, is in all of us. And you'll see this depicted in a lot of the Krishna artwork with him floating in the middle, beautiful shining aura. And then you see little versions of him in the animals, in the trees and uh, other people. So this is also about, um, yeah, remembering who it is that we are. What we see though is, and I feel that they're referencing the current uh, energies on earth as well. So we see the card of the Aeon, 
and we see the card of transformation. We can see many different layers, many different levels to this. We see uh, Nut, the beautiful blue mother sky goddess, and we see in the womb space um, Horus, which is to do with our psychic uh, gifts and things. And we can look into like the energy systems and things like when it comes to this. Let me just bring this up. So when we look into, and this book is called The Hidden Power, of human or the hidden power in humans and it's on chakras and kundalini so with this um when we talk about the inner psychic functions because i feel that this is what it's trying to get us to look into and get us to wake up and remember that we are gods and goddesses so it says the four constant companions that are necessary to investigate and guide on our path of development will now be introduced the antakaranas um, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, which is also the name for the inner senses. It's Antara in three dads. This is uh, enabling our guide of our psychic and mental processes. And though we can feel, think, understand and differentiate. So the Antakaranas, and don't forget, we also have the Rainbow Bridge, which is called the Antakarana. So this one, Antaha Karana, I might be pronouncing it wrong, but it talks about in here, we have um, the manas, the mind, the Buddha, which is the intellect, the chitra, which is consciousness, and um, I cannot pronounce this, sorry guys, uh, ahamakara, which means ego. So I do feel that it's getting us to really kind of dive in, look into these on a much deeper level. And as we see down here from this little symbol shin, and we see the babies being the representation of this. So going from 3D into 4D into 5D as well. Oh, there must be, where is it? Oh, that's a rosella. So we have rosellas here. Now, this is a tiny little one. We have giant red parrots too, king parrots that are here. Um, so they're beautiful little shy creatures, these ones. So it's really nice that she's come in. Um, so yeah, this is really interesting when you get deeper into this. The other thing too, we know that, um, and you guys would have seen many, many depictions of chakras. So I'm not going to show you um, chakras, although you will sort of see just on the border here like the different um, beautiful, uh, I guess, like symbols or seals that they have over the chakras, looking into like our energy systems and how this would integrate or receive updates or uploads as we shift further into like this Kali Yuga and further into this age of Aquarius. We can see here how it's really, really important to focus on energy. So this is our nadis, which is our energy channel. So we see just how many there is of them. There is a huge amount. So it's always interesting to me and fascinating how in, you know, Chinese medicine, they saw the meridians and those vessels and energy systems and channels. Whereas like in like the Vedic side of things, you know, they have all of these nadis and there's just too much like it's written in Sanskrit for a start, but there's too much to get into, but I'm just going to read to you this little part. So energy channels and transmitters. So Nadis are energy channels, which through prana, divine energy, life and consciousness streams. So within the human body, there is a subtle and perfect network of 72,000 Nadis and these distribute the life force throughout the whole body. So on the physical level, the nadi correspond to the nervous system, which influx, or influence extends beyond the astral into the spiritual of our existence. So it is the nadis that are functioning correctly. We then have a healthy, general, happy uh, feeling. But nearly every one of us has some kind of uh, physical or psychic problem, which means that the, some of the nadis are not working properly and need to be balanced. So it talks about um, prana is a conscious energy, which means that the nadis also transmit consciousness. So what if what spirit is trying to show us through these cards and through stringing together all this research and things, what if Mount Maru is transmitting or amplifying or still in contact magnetically with the spiritual realms? We're able to attune this beautiful piezoelectric crystal with the tuning fork that we have made out of flesh on top of that. And we can receive because this is our quantum transducer as well. Um, usually, uh, I love you. <laughs> It was so much fun to research this. So yeah, 
What it also says here too, by means of the nadis, one can see and hear things at a great distance and move into other levels of consciousness. So there's numerous levels of reports of people that are clinically dead um, and then come back to life again. So we call them NDEs um, or uh, near-death experiences. So these are described as how traveled along a tunnel, the light radiating at the end, and the tunnel is uh, the nadi through which life escapes from the body. So we can also have such tunnel experiences in trees on the astral journeys, and that's also what we're going to get into as well. Oh, thank you, Vicky. So sweet. Um, so yeah, we're going to get into some of my experiences of these sorts of things happening. Um, so with this as well, the tunnel is the nadi through which life escapes the body. So it says the nadi makes it possible for us to make these mental journeys of discovery through the entire universe. So we're not limited to just being stuck here in this physical body. If we're using this spiritual nadi pranic energy to travel in this um, this light body. So we see a lot of this um, with some of the avatars and the davids and divas as well, that they have this beautiful light frequency and energy to them. So it says here as well, so with the help of consciousness, we're able to go any place that we would like to go without the body having to move at all. So we can really use this channel. So um, three of the main nadis that have the special importance, we've got um, uh, uh, Ida, Pingala, and Shushin, uh, Shushuma. So I've heard it as Ingala, Pingala. So one of them would represent the feminine. Also, you could have one represent the masculine and then one those two energies integrated. So we seem to see that a lot like within the Vedic culture as well too, that they talk about there being like a masculine and feminine uh, energy. So um, yeah, the uh, physical level Pingala has its counterpart in the sympathetic nervous system and an Indula in the parasympathetic nervous system. And then Shushimana, <laughs> I cannot pronounce this, Shushimana is the central nervous system. So yeah, there's a lot more information for you guys that want to go deep onto that. I'm just going to move this out the way. So what we're seeing at the moment too in the cards, getting back to it. So not only are we going through an upgrade, going from 3D into 4D and 5D and birthing a whole new reality, we're also shedding the veil of the program. So we see here Medusa, who originally was even more beautiful than Aphrodite. And the goddesses got jealous. She got turned into a Pegasus. Then they were still jealous. So she got turned into Medusa. So what we've been programmed, what we've been told, whether it's from movies or society or from different religions and things like that, we actually need to kind of like shed this. We need to come back to this balance like within we need to come back to our connection to source to god to um our higher selves and even to these spiritual places where we can transmit and learn um information directly as well so with this you know there's no no reason we can't go straight to the source or straight to what we would call the akashic records or akashic realms and things of this sort of nature what we do see though is there is a plan to try and stop this and what's interesting, and definitely the Divine Feminine is coming back. Um, and yeah, I'm loving all of your comments. Thank you so much, guys. Um, oh, I haven't even thought of that. That would be something I'm interested in. I have started to write kind of like my version of the cards and things too. So thank you for asking. Uh, but yeah, what we see with this too is Ten of Swords. So time and time again, when we get to a certain stage of spiritual evolution or we get into a new epoch, there is a dark side trying to collapse things. But we are at the end of this kind of situation in terms of where we're sort of heading and the amount, when we talk about like the 144 and everything like that, we have surpassed the amount that we need to kind of have this divine awakening. So the the next card we see going forth in the future, remembering we're looking into Mount Maru as well. So we see here the hanged man. So with this, here's the enlightened or illuminated one. Interestingly enough, in my star tarot, it's actually Krishna with this beautiful halo depicted and this golden kind of sunlight uh, coming in around. Oh, hello, gorgeous sister. Love you. 
Um, so yeah, what we see with this one too, we can see all of this expansion, this knowledge that's just coming to light with him. I call him my matrix breaker. So we're seeing that when we connect in and we go straight to source or we go straight and meditate or astrally travel using this Nadi power that we talked about or this activation of the light body. And you will see like in more kind of like the body side too, you'll have like rainbow light bodies, William Henry and Freddie Silver do some really great shows on that on Gaia if you want to look into a light body activation and things too and yeah spot on Larry um, and Elena and Julia in the house saying hello to you all which is so lovely so yeah they definitely um, are untouchables for the divine uh, protection as well so let's have a look and see some clarifiers to do with Mount Maru and then we are going to start looking into the gods and goddesses side of things as well. All right, so I'm just getting asked for three cards. So we'll pick these. I'll flick these ones straight over. So this is the Star Tarot. So Eight of Swords, Seven of Swords, we're being freed from illusion. So we've been in a mental mind prison. And I feel that tuning into the cards to do with this. Um, oh, hey, Gems. Lovely to see you here. So we have the Eight of Swords. Now, Eight of Swords for me is an interesting energy. It's a butterfly in a cocoon in some of the other depictions. So it talks about us being spiritual beings, but not really being in a state of being aware of this. So I do feel that there will be deeper awakenings for those of you that do go and connect with Mount Maru. You may see the duality worlds. So you may also kind of experience, you know, this vision of seeing kind of, uh, I guess, the true nature of reality. Um, so Seven of Swords to me, it doesn't always just represent that um, depiction of the man sort of sneaking, even though it does represent that things have tried to sneak us by. Um, what we see with this too is it's moon and sun and Aquarius energy. So we usually have it as the sword and it's about holding frequency. So really kind of like holding the line, not buying into a lot of things that we might see coming up soon, especially over this eclipse um, period too. But what we're seeing is a nine of disc. So for those of us that are holding the line, that are holding the frequency, that are meditating in, connecting with some of these spiritual grids that are there as resources for us as well. Um, so definitely connect in with all these grids. Nine of disc is Venus energy and uh, Virgo. So definitely get organized, you know, connect into some of these different physical places and structures, um, connect in with some of the gods and goddesses and the avatars. So really, really interesting. But for me, this one, you know, that says a lot, the matrix breaker or the matrix buster. It's you can't solve the problem from the same level of which it's created. So we're definitely shutting, um, you know, the old side of things. So having a look, I'm just going to bring my screen share up again. And you will see here, I have this beautiful picture. So this one is um, three of the gods. So Rama, the creator, Vishnu, the per, uh, preserver, and Shiva, the destroyer. So we do know like with Sun, they have a Shiva statue out the front. It is built on an old temple. And the mini Sun I heard, which is in the States, was also, I saw something on TikTok. Um, I haven't checked the backstory, uh, but I did see there was a lot of weird plasma energy in that area. So really interesting with other little mini uh, things that they might be doing at the same time to connect to this bigger one. But yeah, we do see um, in uh, the Vedic culture as well that there's 33 million gods is what some people say. So that is a huge amount. So when we look at, you know, these different gods and goddesses, they will take on different avatars or different spiritual forms. So this book here, it is very, very old now. It's one from my college days. It's falling apart a little. Uh, but we see here, I'm just going to bring up my screen for a second. We see here the Ascended Masters light the way beacons of ascension. And remembering the hermit, also the beacon of ascension. So we have here, this is by Joshua David Stone, PhD. You can see here there's various different 
um, enlightened people that they talk about or enlightened avatars uh, that they talk about in this book. So let me just bring back my other screen. So with looking into this, there was some really, really interesting ones. I won't go into it because we don't have time. Um, but yeah, we do see gods and goddesses taking on human form and coming in. So when we were talking about Kalki before and the end of the Kal Yuga and him coming in. So Kalki would be, I forget which god he's related to, but you have like one God sort of come in. So say you've got Krishna and then he will come in in various different forms in different lifetimes. And so people will recognize his energy or frequency. Um, yeah. So let's have a look at my next one. And oh, this pick, I did pick specifically. See how there's an ethereal kind of grace and just a beautiful otherworldly veiled light coming off of it. This is what I see when these gods and goddesses and different beings appear to me. So it is very, very different, like with the Vedic culture. And I wonder, you know, sometimes like I have questioned when I was younger, why it is that, you know, not being from an Indian background or culture, why these sorts of things would appear to me. But I think it's all to do with frequency. And if our little antennas are tuned on, we're very easy to um, to reach or to, you know, bring through information. So it's just about kind of, I guess, our world coming back to being one tribe in a way too. Um, so, yeah, I mean, no disrespect to any other culture when I talk about other subjects and literally talking about some of my experience and the research. So we see this beautiful pic too of Krishna and Radha as well. So him being the depiction of the, the male energy, her being the depiction of the divine feminine. So there's some really beautiful uh, love stories and things like that that you'll find looking into this beautiful couple. We do see that he's depicted with blue skin as well. So we see this in a few um, cultures, like we see this in the Arcturian um, star nations and um, some of the Syrians when we're talking about off-world interplanetary side of things. We also see that they talk about some of the Syrians having blue skin and there's various other, um, you know, Andromedans to me, sometimes they are more kind of in energy body form when I'm seeing them manifest. Um, what I will tell you though is, uh, let me just bring up this one. Oh, this one here, you see Kali, and she's the mother goddess. Her beautiful blue skin, and I know it might look a little bit like a scary pic because she is the fierce mother goddess. Um, what we see with her, though, and the way that they depict that sort of essence of blue across the majority of the text is exactly the way they show up. So when I look into different works and different kind of theosophies or um, philosophies and different things, it always amazes me first how I see these things and then kind of research and find out that, it, you know, the way that it's shown to me is exactly the way that it's written in ancient pi pictures and scripts and texts and things like that. Um, oh, that's amazing, Julie. I've had beings wake up, uh, wake up to blue beings right in front of me and things. So I want to talk to you more about you dreaming of seeing yourself with blue skin. I saw myself with blue skin when I had ayahuasca once. I saw myself as a gigantic, tall blue bean with lotuses and things too. So yeah, this is really it's a fascinating topic. Let me just make sure that we're covering everything. So yeah, we also have the avatars. So when we look to the movie Avatar and it's a person, you know, taking a, a body to operate in that planet, that realm. So we're essentially operating our avatars, but you will see in like light that um, in this book, where certain people, their parents would get a premonition or a dream or an experience. Uh, I'm just going to bring this up so you guys can see it again. So yeah, what we see sometimes is the parents will get a dream or a vision or a prayer for wanting to actually um, have a child that has these kinds of God or goddess-like features um, or a here to kind of be a way shower. What was a really, really interesting one when we talk about Kali, because I've got her up as well. Um, so we have the story of this one which is, let me just read backwards for a moment. So we have Sri Rama Krishna, his life and teachings. So what was really, really fascinating was that he um, had this all-consuming desire to meet Kali. So the goddess that we see here, who I've actually had her appear to me 
Um, and it was quite the shock, let me tell you. So he desired this so much that one day he actually came across the sword and he trusted that he would see her so much. He actually plunged a, a sword into himself. And upon pretty much dying, he literally like prayed to have the mother save him or to have her appear. And uh, when she appeared, there was such a state of kind of like love and motherly bliss and kind of being held that he asked and prayed to some of the other uh, lesser gods to pretty much like help him live, but on the condition of um, still being intact or still retaining in this state of bliss. So he then went on to like have that as his teachings. Um, so yeah, there's some really, really fascinating ones. For me, when I saw Carly manifest, it was in the beginning year of the whole um pandemic situation, if you want to use that word. I know a lot of us think differently of it. Um, but yeah, I actually, my partner and I at the time who, um, you know, he was a main doctor working here in Melbourne to do with that whole situation going on. So we had very different views on things, but we were talking about the government um, and how things were being dealt with. And there was one person that a lot of the doctors were angry at that was governing our state. Anyway, um, you know, that a lot of the people had been talking about he needs to be taken out or to get gone essentially and I saw this beautiful goddess appear and I was like oh my gosh I think you need to sage your apartment because <laughs> what I'm seeing like it's it's a bit concerning and then all of a sudden I was hit with this energy and I, I'm like, I need to Google, you know, goddess, holding heads, wearing skull necklaces, you know, things like this. Um, and yeah, anyway, just as I go to like Google it, I'm like, Carly, I had the name. So um, she is a fierce mother protector. You can actually call on these gods and goddesses at various different times. Um, so that's a little bit about my interaction and experience with her. Uh, let's go across to the next pick. Oh, actually here we go so this one is another one that appeared to me so this is Paravati and with Paravati this is like one of her depictions so she actually appeared to me um I was laying down having a pranic healing session and my beautiful pranic healer who is amazing um her name is Ambika which actually I told her at the end of the session what happened and who I saw and she's like that's really bizarre because her name Ambika is also like a a derivative of Paravati, she was telling me. So what I saw though was beautiful, I try and depict it. So if you've got me laying on, let me just pop this up. So if you've got me laying on, um, you know, the healing table, and then I see this beautiful gold kind of like veiled energy reconnecting me back to God is what it felt like, or back to the universe. And then what I saw behind my head as I felt my body lift up, and I would be in spirit body at this state and kind of aware of things happening between the veil between worlds, because that's just what I see and experience. But I saw this vision of the clouds. And then from that vision of the clouds, I saw her looking down. So she was in the center. There was other gods and goddesses that were there as well. Um, and I can see Debs as well also saying about the different smells. Yeah, so some of the gods and goddesses will appear with a certain fragrance or frequency, and we tend to use some of those fragrances or frequencies or incense and different things to as like a dedication uh, to some of these beautiful beings. Um, so with Paravati, what I felt and what I saw was just kind of like a really, really beautiful, proud type feeling coming into our realm. So she was showing me that the gods and goddesses that are aware, um, yeah, of those of us that are awake and working with reconnecting back to spiritual realms and things of that nature, or trying to kind of wake other people up, they're very proud. Um, Oh, it's interesting, Tammy. I can see you saying you feel her often in the Rocky Mountains. So yeah, I wonder if there's like a little portal there, but you can see here, it's that light, that glow as well. So I'm just checking in. 
make sure that we're talking about this. Oh, the other experience that I did want to share with you guys as well is back when I was in college and I went to um, Hare Krishna's for a talk and the main speaker that had come from overseas, who I forget who it is now, um, but I was trying to view and watch the talk and I'm like, oh, if only like you could see through people. And all of a sudden, the person's shoulder disappeared and I watched the entire 45 minute talk through an invisible shoulder. So when we look into gods and goddesses and we look into, you know, the nadis and the energy and things that we're talking about today too, it's really, really interesting that particles can reorganize or restructure. So I also want to talk about, let me see if I've got my little Ganesha here as well. Another experience that I had was with uh, Ganesha. So I've just got my little one here today. So he is the elephant uh, headed goddess. So I've heard him referred to as Ganesh or Ganesha. So he's the remover of obstacles. And I've had him come in sometimes when I'm experiencing like a difficult time or I'm wondering how to move past a certain blockage. I've had him um, actually come in like a giant elephant eye looking at me eye to eye, which is how when I've interacted and connected and worked with an animal communicator, some of the elephants will come up eye to eye as well so I thought that was really interesting but yeah you will get some of these gods and goddesses extend help to us um and yeah he's a really really beautiful one he's a favorite with a lot of kids too uh just because he does look so different but yeah really beautiful being so always use your own discernment when you are seeing or um Oh, cool. Shauna, you're burning some incense as well. Um, perfect. So yeah, when you are working with any of these types of beings or any other culture or anything appears to you, you guys know I always practice discernment. So ask if they love you unconditionally or if they're here for your best and highest good as well. Um, so I'm just going to see. Uh, lovely. Yeah, he's a really great one, especially for the moment. He's a great one to call in and Kali as well to help remove people that don't have good intention for the children of Earth. Hey, Laura, lovely to see you here too. So I'm just reading. Uh, and let's go into the next one. So we went to this one. So I have a little uh, video to play here. What I'm going to do first though, because I don't think the sound's going to come up. I'm just going to close a lot of my windows off. So please bear with me as I do this. I will just take a moment. I just want to make sure that we have as strong a connection as I can. And I'm definitely going to be looking out for that Kalki uh, movie coming out. I think it was around the 8th of May, that uh, Indian one. I think it's going to be maybe some Easter eggs, perhaps, do you think, guys, in that? And uh, please comment, like, if you guys have had different um, apparitions, so you've had some of these gods and goddesses present or show to you. So let me just bring this up. And here we go. This should work. was not shared by nationalist Germany as they sent expeditions all over the world convinced that sacred esoteric texts held ancient knowledge concerning advanced technology from distant antiquity and that modern man was in the state of amnesia, ancient Aryan Hindu myths talk of noble gods who fight off wicked forces, flying in craft called Vimanas, and as Oppenheimer alluded to, they portray what to many seem to be nuclear war. The aircraft are described in ancient Hindu Sanskrit texts are flying machines and were machines allegedly piloted by their ancient Aryan gods. These flying craft came in all shapes and sizes and can travel at different speeds and distances. Some were land and seafaring vehicles while others flew in the air, sometimes all the way to the moon or further. So yeah, that was an interesting video that I came across too by Robert Zephyr. And he has some really, really interesting videos on many, many different topics. So I'm also going to bring up, this was a Facebook post, gosh, from years ago now. So I'm just going to read this to you guys. So I had an experience last night whilst in a dream state. Oh, 
September 9th, 2018. So quite a while ago now. So I had an experience last night whilst in dream state. In the experience, I was walking along a street set on a hillside overlooking the beach. There were houses and lush tropical style plants. As I kept walking, I saw floating in the sky, a beautiful temple palace, uh, Vamana. I could also see beings standing in the doorway of the beautiful Vamana. They were beautiful, glowing, unearthly beings. Their energy radiated out and was so beautiful. I saw the colors of sunset within the energy fields, pink, orange, yellow, blue, and violet. The flying temple was golden and had its own glow. In the dream, I was thinking I should have taken a photo, but minutes later, they were gone. When you have these experiences, either conscious or unconscious, it's important uh, to really immerse yourself in the experience. What is trying? What is it trying to teach you? Uh, what does the experience feel like? What is happening? So these experiences can be looked at in meditation or hypnosis. So I haven't actually investigated this one. So it's a good reminder to maybe perhaps go into hypnosis. But you can see here the um, picture that has the clouds with the temple floating. It literally looked like this. It's probably like the best picture that I could find to represent that. And it was just incredible. I did not want to leave. Um, I could see everything. She had like a flying carpet. That would be fun. Um, so yeah, that was a really, really beautiful one. We see here where we talk about Vamanas. This is the, um, a few different depictions that we see in like religious texts. So we see here that they're actually like temples that fly. So you'll see various different um, technology associated with this. You'll also see if you guys go in and research, obviously I can't share everything because there's too much to share. But what we see too is some of these have moving parts. So you'll see some of these ancient temples will actually be able to move like the stone structure. They'll have segments in the temple that look like uh, airplane fans and things like that as well. Um, so yeah, really, really interesting stuff. Um, I'm just reading a few of your comments as well. Yeah, hypnosis, definitely, Jake. Um, it's such a wonderful tool. So we can see here as well, there's other kind of like pearls of light, which I've shared with you on other shows, some of my UFO uh, footage. I've also been to different places and had visions of temples that perhaps existed in the past. So whether some of these temples have been destroyed. Um, but yeah, what's interesting is there's various different free energy technology. Some of them look like that they're flying uh, drones as well. We can see here this one more kind of looks like a drone. Um, and we can see people pointing to them in the sky. So some of them will actually utilize red mercury. Here's another Fermana as well. So red mercury is really interesting. I didn't put a pick up because there's like a lot out there for you guys to go down that whole rabbit hole. Um, so let me just put this up. So with red mercury, it's interesting when you see videos on it, people will pour it on a plate and they'll have a mirror. So for example, say they've got the plate here, there's a mirror here. It doesn't have a reflection is what I've seen in other videos. It also, if you put garlic near it, this red mercury that kind of looks like a molecule um, of like a ruby sort of version of mercury, the uh, red mercury will actually move away from the garlic. So do go check this out. TikTok has a lot of those videos as well as some have been taken down off YouTube. I wonder why. Um, the other thing that we see with it too is it's attracted to gold. So uh, you'll see with people that have centrifugal or free energy devices, when they put mercury into it, it goes round and round in kind of like a vortex or a toroidal field type uh, side of things. Yeah, and Tim's right. Definitely check out um, David Hatcher Childress books on Vermanas. I haven't read them, but I've seen like a few of his talks and things. Um, so yeah. Such amazing information when you look into a lot of the evidence, when we look into the Tartarian cultures, the Mayan culture, the uh, Indian Vedic cultures, and the various different other ones. We have ETs and UFOs hiding in plain sight. Um, another thing, too, is when we look into the Viril Society and we look into Maria I can't pronounce the last name, Ostrich. I think I might be pronouncing it a little bit different. Um, she actually received downloads for the Bellcraft, which looked a little bit similar to, um, I'm not sure if we've got a depiction of it in the pics that I've got. I did go through so many pics. These were just the ones that kind of like made the final cut. Uh, let me see with this one. 
it's probably more kind of like this um this temple like uh picture but yeah what's interesting if you go in them in modern day times today you can still move them around they still have the moving parts so let's have a look into if there's anything else that wanted to be shared to us um maybe perhaps even connecting to some of these beautiful gods and goddesses and the card that comes out first literally my deck separated and didn't want to stick back together um we have the shaman and some of these vamanas you'll also see where people are flying on i don't think i've saved one on here but you will see sometimes there'll be like a bird-like Vramana. So people look like they're flying on a giant swan or a giant um, flying bird. So let's have a look into this one. So we see here that they are wanting to help connect. They are wanting to help bring peace to our world. And they are wanting to help uh, extinguish some of the darkness. So I do feel that we are. Oh, Laura, you're so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. So let's have a look and see what it is. Now, remember with the card, the tower, it has the hieroglyph per, which means our words are as precious as gold. Definitely, Yvonne, thank you for that. If you guys can hit the like button, please share this with anyone that you think would be really interested in this uh, information and the technology that we're also talking about. Uh, but yeah, I wish that I had another lifetime to study Vedic astrology. I've got a few books on Ayurvedic uh medicine and, and things of that sort of nature. Let's have a look and see if there's any kind of parting messages that the gods and goddesses that are for our best and highest good would like to share with us. And as I'm picking these cards, I feel like a golden ray of sunshine, not the actual sun, but like a spiritual energy just around my crown chakra. So I do feel that they are providing healing, awakening. They are kind of trying to be like a guiding force or like a parent type energy within our lives. So because we don't have much time, let's flip these over. So interesting, we have chariot energy too. Um, so the first one, knight of swords. So we have to ask in order to receive. Now do make sure to ask for your best and highest good as well. And we have here divine communication, channeling energy. So we do need to also make sure that we're working with the nadis, with the energy system, with the chakras, that we're activating and in alignment with our best and highest good as well. Uh, the next thing that we also see is a chariot. So when we look into Vimanas and chariots, because they also have pics of flying chariots too. So, you know, it is a different kind of anti-gravity technology that they're also using. Um, so with this Prince of Disc, we see here he has the sphere and you guys that watch me regularly know I talk about the 3D uh, world or the cube inside of that too. So in order to go on to our next stage of evolution, we must really work as spiritual beings and more kind of work as a god or goddess incarnated in the earthly realm. So really looking into what kind of actions, attitude, uh, mindset, behavior, thoughts and things that we would have if we were gods and goddess realized on the earth. We also have the universe card. So we see that this also um, represents endings and beginnings as well. So we see she's trying to control this energy come in with this giant Kundalini snake, but we also see this tower, or sorry, this uh, mansion being built down the bottom. So it really is looking at like what it is that we want to manifest for the future here on earth, this utopia energy. Um, and then we have nine of swords too. So again, it's just talking about some of the darker sides of things, trying to spoil fat, uh, what is it called? Foil plans. I don't know why they call it foil. I would say spoil. Um, but yeah, I just want to thank you guys also for showing up today. It was so lovely to share this with you. So please do like, share and subscribe. And I'm just going to jump back to remind you guys as well to please head on over to, um, to Mace on Jupiter. And please do share. We are growing, which is so lovely. And the girls and I put in so much work to really getting these shows out to you guys. Um, you know, it is a huge passion and love. Oh, and Sophie and I did a show the other day on tarot and our favorite decks and our approach and things um, to them. That was a really, really good show to check out. And obviously check out Elena 
and uh, Julie and what they've been doing recently over in Dominican Republic. So yeah, you can see here, we have used the 10% discount code for any of mine or Sophie's readings and Elena's candles as well. And I'll click on the mystical oracle reading so you guys can see. So we do also do, um, you know, the aura drawing as well. Both my readings go for an hour, you can record them. Um, so yeah, you can see here as well, illuminate your path um, is like a big part of what I love to do. So we look into the cards, into your aura, um, and really just channeling messages direct from spirit too. So I hope you guys enjoyed today. Please leave a little comment below if you've had any visions, experiences with mandalas showing up with gods and goddesses as well. And I wish I could pop up all of your comments because I just really, I love and adore each and every one of you. And yeah, thank you for joining me. All right, have a beautiful weekend. And yeah, remember what we talked about and shared over the past few weeks in regards to holding your frequency high as we're going through this um, next couple of days with the 8th uh, and with the solar eclipse as well. All right, bye.